This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. If you don't mind, put your hands together and give God praise right here. Give God praise. grateful for those who are here uh, present today and for those who are online we welcome you to this worship experience it is our prayer that everything that is said and done will give God the praise give him the glory and give him the honor that he so richly deserves let us go to the Lord in prayer Father God we thank you for this day we thank you for all the blessings that we are the recipients of we thank you oh God for last night's watch care we thank you for waking us up this morning and closing our right mind with a reasonable portion of health and strength Oh God, we pray that as we enter into this worship experience, that we will just take ourselves out of ourselves, oh God, and just lose ourselves in you. We look forward to an awesome worship experience. Oh God, we ask your continued blessings and prayer upon the sick and the shed in, oh God, those who have been uh, affected by this coronavirus, those who have recovered from this coronavirus, those who are uh, suffering other afflictions, oh God, we pray that you would just touch them in the name of Jesus. We know that all that we ask for, oh God, if we ask in faith, you will grant it in grace. So God, thank you. We praise you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We ask that you will continue to bless the Tabernacle of Praise Christian Church and every church door that is open in your name. We bless you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. And amen. amen. At this time, I'm going to ask if Minister Kendra Coleman would come and offer us a sermonic selection, and after which we're going to get into the Word. I come through many hard trials, through temptations on every hand.
This is what spiritual and law-abiding people do. The problem usually occurs when an issue arises that might be considered controversial, which causes tension or conflict. These issues sometimes get glossed over and even ignored in an attempt to try and minimize discord or to remain in good graces with someone deemed important. There are those with good intentions, like brother, don't rock the boat, our sister, go with the flow, who jump in and try to smooth over everybody's ruffle feathers, but this is like sweeping things under the rug, so the issue is never resolved, which leaves everyone with underlying feelings of frustration. Are you praying with me? Yes. One example of this is a statement that seems to make its rounds whenever there is racial conflict. I've heard this statement used by all races, blacks, whites, Asians, Hispanic, and others. The statement is this. What you see going on across the nation is not a skin issue, it's a sin issue. Mm. Well, in my opinion, to make that statement without some amplifying dialogue is to sidestep a skirt around the issue of sin versus skin. Mm. Consider the following examples. When you are followed around by a store clerk, or a security guard when you enter a department store just because you're black. That's not a sin issue, that's a skin issue. Listen, when a person crosses the street to keep from passing you, or get off an elevator from right foot to prevent riding along with you, or clutch their purse tighter because of you, that's not a sin issue, that's a skin issue. When you have committed no traffic violation but you are stopped by law enforcement because you're black, that's not a sin issue, that's a skin issue. More commonly referred to uh, by blacks as DWB. That's driving while black. If you have been profiled and treated suspiciously simply because of your race, that's not a skin issue, that's, a, that's not a sin issue, that's a skin issue. There are many more examples I could cite, but I, I think you're getting my point. Now, even though the person who uses this statement, this is a skin issue and not a sin issue, a sin issue and not a skin issue, they might be coming from a good place and doing so with the utmost sincerity, not intending to be malicious or insensitive in any way, but when they do that, they do so without comprehending that it, it, it could be borderline offensive to say that the injustices we see occurring across the country is a sin issue and not a skin issue. Y'all still praying with me? Right. First John 5 and 17 states, all unrighteousness is sin. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure we all would agree that the act of uh, wrongdoing is a sin, but while it is a sinful act for anyone to treat a person uh, differently for any reason, when it comes to racial interaction, the sinful act occurs only because of the color of their skin. Now stay with me now. It is an essential part of African American parents to have the talk with their children. I'm not referring to the sex talk, although that is a very important conversation to have with your children. I'm referring to the talk about what it means to be black in America. Not because of their sin, but because of their skin. Black parents have to tell their children, you don't get the benefit of the doubt. In fact, you have to be extra careful so you won't be accused of doing something you did not do. Not because of sin, but because of skin. I had to tell my children, but especially my son, that whether he's in an elevator, whether they're walking or jogging down the street in the early morning hours, or getting out of his car in the suburb where he actually resides, he must be extremely careful, not because of his sin, but because of his skin. He must always make an extra effort to let people know that he's not a threat, even though to them he might look like he is, not because of sin, but because of skin. Mm -hmm. So the injustices that we are seeing occurring across the nation are both a skin issue and a sin issue. They are inextricably bound to one another. Ephesians 4 and 25 from the Message Bible states, what this adds up to is this, no more lies. No more pretense. 
Tell your neighbor the truth. In Christ's body, we are all connected to one another. Everybody say all connected. All connected. After all, when you lie to one another, you end up lying to yourself. But with all that being said, I am very confident and fully persuaded that all of these issues can be resolved by the sovereign God that I serve, who is able to do exceeding abundantly and above all that I ask God thanks. Somebody say amen. 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 Now, now, now listen, I understand that, that if you're not a person of color, it is virtually impossible for you to comprehend or even, even fathom what it feels like to be wrapped up in black skin and treated differently because of it. But by listening, not, not, not just hearing, but by listening attentively, we, when we express ourselves verbally, you should be able to sense the heaviness of our hearts, begin to understand our struggles, hear the frustration behind our words, and possibly even see the tears that might flow when we talk about all of the societal ills that affect us repeatedly. Then and only then can we learn and grow from our conversation. I believe that with all my heart that if we take the time to listen to one another, change can occur. Case in point, Drew Brees, future Hall of Fame quarterback of the New Orleans Saints, recently spoke out again about kneeling during the national anthem because he felt it was disrespecting the flag and the United States of America. However, the kneeling during the national anthem was never about disrespecting the flag or the military. I am a Navy veteran, and I would never condone disrespecting the flag or the military or the United States. But because Breeze didn't understand what the protest was actually targeting, he made his comments based on what he perceived to be true, but it was erroneous information. But listen to this, after listening, somebody say listening. listening. Not merely hearing, but listening to the truth and educating himself, Drew Brees made the following retraction, and I quote, through my ongoing conversation with friends, teammates, and leaders in the black community, I realized that this kneeling protest is not an issue about the American flag. It never has been. We can no longer use the flag to turn people away or distract them from the real issues that face our black communities. Mm -hmm. We did this back in 2017, and regretfully, I brought it back with my comments this week. We must stop talking about the flag and shift our attention to the real issues of systemic racial injustice, economic oppression, police brutality, yeah. and judicial and prison reform. Yeah. We are at the critical juncture of our nation's history, if not now, when? We as a white community need to listen and learn from the pain and suffering of our black communities. We must acknowledge their problems, identify the solutions, and put them into action. The black community cannot do it alone. This will require all of us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Drew Brees could have preached that here. Listen, Breeze was able to come to these conclusions because of having some tough talks. Yeah. Somebody said tough talks. Yeah. A key part of the process to implement change includes tough talks for tough times to bring some tough issues to light and resolve conflict. And this is all done in an effort to become connected and committed to finding a way to move forward together. Right. Okay. However, as Christians, our dialogue must not come from our emotions. Right. Let me say that again. Our dialogue cannot come from our emotions. We can't I just, I just feel like that. No, that's, that, that's not going to work. Our conversation must be done from a kingdom perspective. Right. Somebody say kingdom perspective. Kingdom. See, because if I try to converse merely from my feelings, it's more than likely not going to be a productive conversation. But if I do it with a kingdom perspective, my emotions will remain in check. They will be honest, but tough talk will occur. Personally, uh, consider this analogy. I, I know the benefit of having tough talks in tough times. In the mid to latter part of the 1980s, after being married 12 to 15 years, as we were wading through the crucibles of domestic difficulty, 
My wife and I have to have a tough talk about a tough time that we experience it. But after the talk, after we listened, we came to the decision that if we did not both make some radical and necessary changes in our behavior, our marriage was doomed. So after we both went to work and got busy on self-improvements. Yeah. I, I, I hope y'all didn't miss that. We both had some work to do. Listen, you gotta always start with that person you see in the mirror every day because it's easy to see the flaws in somebody else. Yeah. Amen. So when it comes to get, making things better, you gotta look in the mirror. Michael Jackson said, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. Yeah. I'm asking him to change his ways. And no message could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself yeah. and make that change. Somebody said, make that change. Amen. So we did that. Cassandra and I both did this. And, and come November 28th of this year, we'll be married 50 years. Praise God. So Hallelujah. Half a century. Wow. <laughs> Although it was difficult to hear some things about myself, I listened. I changed. I became a better man, a better husband, and a better father. And my wife became better overall as well. My hope for the community, locally and nationally, is for each person to be a, on a self-reflective journey that draws them closer to God. Mm -hmm. Then they will seek His will in their lives every day. Every day. A community, as a community and a nation, we have a lot we need to talk about. Mm -hmm. In other words, we need to have some tough talks for tough times. Uh -huh. What happened to George Floyd and to so many others before him? And unfortunately, what continues to happen is tragic, mm. it's heartbreaking, yes. it's unjust. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of work to do, we'll, we'll include a lot of tough talks, but that is necessary if we are truly interested in uniting in love as brothers and sisters in Christ. Please understand, now I'm not saying that tough talks gives you a license to be rude. Doesn't give you a license to be crass and just say whatever comes to your mouth. Look, thoughtless and careless words could cause irreparable damage. Mm -hmm. Listen to what the word says in 1 Timothy 5, verses 1 and 2 from the God's Word translation. Never use harsh words when you correct an older man, mm -hmm. but talk to him as if he were your father. Mm -hmm. Talk to younger men as if they were your brother. Older women as if they were your mothers and younger women as if they were your sisters. Here's the bottom line. In any relationship, whether it's a marriage, a friendship, a business, a church, or in the community, until we care enough to confront, to resolve any underlying barriers, we will never grow close to each other to get where we need to be. All right, all right, all right. The today's English version of Proverbs 24 and 26 says, an honest answer is a sign of true friendship. Right. Let me read that again. Right. An honest answer is a sign of true friendship. It is much easier to remain silent when others around us are messing up, but it's not the loving thing to do. Right. Right. Unfortunately, many people don't have anyone in their lives who love them enough to show them some tough love. So consequently, they make the same mistake over and over and over, go down the same road all the time. Usually we know what needs to be said, but fear keeps us from, from saying it. Fear of what? Fear of being accepted. Fear of offending someone. Fear of being misunderstood. Fear of being ostracized. Uh, fear for some other reason. I'll never forget what one of my senior deacons told me at my first pastorate in California. He said, Pastor Nate, if the truth hurts, it's best that you be hurt because it's going to make you better. Uh, that was profound. Yeah. That was profound. So we must keep in mind that an honest answer is the sign of true friendship. And to care sometimes means that we must confront. Yeah. Yeah. Seeing how divided our country is right now, it's clear to me and it should be clear to all of you that some tough talks about race relations in America need to be made. Instead of remaining on separate teams, we need to be committed to be one united team. It starts by listening and understanding those who are frustrated and those who are hurting. 
the civil unrest that we are currently seeing across the country is not just about George Floyd. Yeah. This is about hundreds of years of slavery, right. coupled with the systemic racism, discrimination, prejudice, and inequality in our country that unfortunately are still very much felt by us, especially by African Americans. Yeah. An example of how long this has been going on, in the year 1963, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was arrested in Alabama for a nonviolent march that violated an injunction against parading without a permit. The next day, eight white clergy published an article criticizing the actions of Dr. King as saying they were unwise and untimely. Dr. King responded with a letter from a Birmingham jail which he wrote on pieces of toilet paper and on the margins of newspaper. This letter is now considered uh, by, in theological and civil rights circles as a modern day epistle. Right. Dr. King said, and I quote, you deplore the demonstrations that are presently taking place in Birmingham, but I'm sorry that your statement did not express a similar concern for the conditions that brought the demonstrations into being. End quote. <clears throat> Unfortunately, those words are just as relevant today they are. as they were 57 years ago. Yes. Since May 25th, there has been a nationwide outpouring of anger and grief mm -hmm. over the death of George Floyd. Yes. There has been peaceful demonstrations with the police and protesters uniting together, kneeling together, praying together, coming together, but unfortunately, there's also been some rioting. Mm -hmm. There's also been some looting. Despite a plea from George Floyd's brother to stop the violence, the killing of George Floyd represents far too many injustices over far too many years that were not caught on camera. Mm -hmm. I'm well aware that there are some who are listening to and viewing the, this service who may consider this message controversial and wanted to direct their vitriol in my direction for bringing this subject to light and a message on a Sunday morning. But please don't take the bait and allow bitterness to take root. The truth I want to convey emphatically is that you can be pro-law enforcement and believe in the right to protest peacefully. Amen. Amen. While also condemning the rights and looting and violence that is happening. It's not an either or decision. You can do all three. Right. Romans 13, 1 through 3. 1 Peter 2, 13 through 15. And Hebrews 13 and 17. It says that we shall obey those who are in authority. So in obedience to God's word, I support the police. Mm -hmm. I support those who are in authority who do the things the correct way. I applaud those men and women who put their lives on the line daily to serve and protect in a positive manner. I also support social uh, uh, justice initiatives and commend those individuals who take an active stand to get involved with peaceful protests to enact change in keeping with their First Amendment rights. But I also abhor uh, and, and condemn violence of any kind. Right. I support and encourage dialogue that leads to solution that will make all of us better. Oh. I agree with these notable figures who spoke out against injustice. Nella, Nelson Mandela said, as long as poverty, injustice, and gross inequality persist in our world, none of us can truly rest. Right. Mahatma Gandhi said, Silence becomes cowardice when occasion demands speaking out against the whole truth and acting accordingly. Coretta Scott King said, I can't help but believe that at some time in the not too distant future, there is going to be another movement to change these systemic conditions of poverty, injustice, and violence in people's lives. This is where we've got to go but it's going to be a struggle, end quote. Well, my brothers and sisters, the movement is alive, and the struggle is real, but the good news, I heard Tasha Cobb say, there's an army rising up. There is an army rising up. Why are they rising? To break every 
their chain. What chain need to be broken? Chains of systemic racism, chains of poverty, chains of injustice of all kinds. So this is not the time to choose sides. We may have come over here in different ships, but we're in the same boat now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is about being honest and real about our country's flaw so we can get better. This is about addressing the years of prejudice, racism, and inequality in our country that still exists. Let us not hide from it or attempt to cover it up. Ignoring it will not make it go away. Admitting there is a problem, talking about it, and growing from it is how we all are going to get better. As a society, we can't simply talk about those issues and do nothing, mm -hmm. which seems to occur far too often. We must create policies and implement solutions that address these systemic issues. We must create policies that, that, that work. We need to bring back Head Start programs oh. and commit to spend more on early education than we do on prisons. We must work within our families to help those who are struggling socially and financially. We must, uh, I'm definitely not in favor of disbanding police forces across the nation but that, because that would only lead to anarchy. Yeah. However, without a doubt, policing policies require major reformation immediately. Yeah. Yeah. We must enact criminal justice reform. Currently, a small infraction puts you in the system, and once you're in the system, it's virtually impossible, especially for a person of color, to get out. And this has led to mass incar incarceration of African American men who make up the vast majority of the prison system. So, Pastor Nate, how do we respond to all that's going on? And what do we do to make a difference? Another quote from Dr. King says, and I quote, there was a time when the church was very powerful and the time when the, church, the early church rejoiced at de being deemed worthy to suffer for what they believed. In those days, the church was not merely a thermometer that recorded the ideas and principles of popular opinion. It was a thermostat that transformed the morals of society, end quote. Listen to me, saints of God. We have been called for such a time as this. Yes, yes that, that was a song we used to sing in the church I grew up in. It said, we are soldiers in the army. We, we got to fight, although we have to cry. We got to hold up the blood stain back. We got to hold it up until we die. This is our moment to stand in the gap as bold soldiers in the army of the Lord. So I, listen, this is our time to be the church that God is calling for. We need to be a house of prayer. We need to be a house of reconciliation for all people. So I caution you not to react to the temperature or the climate of culture. As God's people, we must set the thermostat and shift the atmosphere with an extra measure of grace and mercy for everyone who is created in God's image. You know, here recently, every time I look at the news, that I see all of the discord and the divisiveness across the country. There's just a whole collage of emotion that crops up inside of me. I feel anger, I feel sadness, I feel grief, I feel frustration, I feel confusion, and so many more. But the prevailing desire that has elevated itself among all the others is the desire to help in some way to make a difference. So in my capacity as a pastor and preacher of the good news and of the gospel, I find myself praying, Lord, I want to preach and deliver messages of reconciliation yes. that affect change and bring blacks and whites and all people together in one body. Right. Listen, listen, listen. I, I realize that I can't answer every question. I realize I can't solve every problem. And often, I don't even know what to do next. But I'm reminded of what Jeh Jehoshaphat prayed in the middle of a national crisis in the latter part of 2 Chronicles 2 and 20 and 12. He said, Lord, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. We must always look to God because reconciliation always begins with a right relationship with our Lord and Savior in whom, in his image, all of us were created. We won't always know what to do, but one thing is certain, we should not remain silent. 
there is a sin of silence that makes us complicit when a word or an action uh, from us could turn a bad situation around, as in the case with the officers who stood by and watched an innocent man be murdered. There are those who say, I I'm just one person. I can't do anything. But this is a quote from Mah Mahatma Gandhi negates that logic. It says, and I quote, there are two days in the year that we cannot do anything. Yesterday and tomorrow. End quote. Listen, it's virtually impossible for one person to change the world. But what you do or say could change one person's world. Yeah, think about that. Barring another quote from Dr. King, and I quote, we are now faced with the fact that tomorrow is today. We are confronted with the fierce urgency of now. In this unfolding conundrum of life, there is such a thing as being too late. Mm -hmm. it Listen, saints, inaction is action. Indecision is a decision. Mm -hmm. Delayed obedience is disobedience. So don't let what you cannot do keep you from doing what you can do. Look for opportunities to be a light, to show love, to be a minister of reconciliation to those who don't look like you, who don't talk like you, who don't think like you, and with the election coming up, who don't vote like you. <laughs> there is a great commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater opportunity than the present. My prayer is that the gospel of reconciliation will break the yoke break. of all the forms of injustice that we face in Jesus' name. Yeah. So let's step up and step in and be reconciled to be the body of Christ. Yes, Lord. Let me say this in closing. I, I just want to be transparent and let you know that it was difficult for me to craft this sermon. Mm -hmm. I, I, I spent uh, weeks working on this since all this started and generally when I go and edit a sermon I get to cut out some things but Every time I went to edit, I kept adding more because of all the information that kept coming up in front of us. But listen, this message was not intended to criticize or to castigate anyone, but rather to educate us and empower us as God's people. It would have been a lot easier for me to expound on one of the many lessons of, from Jesus about love, rather than to talk about societal issues. But I was reminded of this passage from Micah chapter 6 and verse 8 from the contemporary English version. The Lord has told us what is right and what he demands. See that justice is done. Let mercy be your first concern and humbly obey your God. I believe I have a moral, ethical, societal, and a pastoral obligation to speak out against injustice and thereby hopefully inspire myself and others to have tough talk in tough times that will help to heal our country. Oh, yeah. amen. amen. And amen. Come on, give God praise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you live locally and you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or if you're already a Christian and you want to become a, a member of the Tabernacle Praise Christian Church, or if you don't live locally and you want to become a member of our online virtual church, send your contact information and any other questions you have to labhill60 at gmail.com. Again, that's labhill60 at gmail.com. Thanks to all of our top partners and friends that have continued to support us financially. But for those of you who might desire to support us financially, these are the methods by which you can give. You can support Top with your giving four different ways. Via Cash App, our ID is dollar sign T-O-P-C-C-4325. Texting TOP to 77977. Using the TOP app to access PushPay by clicking the giving icon. And finally, you can mail us your gifts at 4325 Hacks Cross Road, Memphis, Tennessee 38125. Back to you, Pastor Nate. Just one final thought. If you happen to disagree, I would like to just discuss any of uh, the information that you receive from this message today. Contact me at Dr. Nate at tabernaclepraisecc.org. Again, that's Dr. Nate at tabernaclepraisecc.org. 
so we can talk about it from a kingdom perspective and learn more about each other so we can grow together. Only by having tough talks in tough times about tough issues will we, will we become a team working together to create a better future. One quite final quote from Dr. King, it says, and I quote, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Right. My genuine desire that every message I deliver will, will give God the glory and edify his people. So until next time, this is Pastor Nate saying, have a blessed day.